Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive on the Dave Ramsey portfolio. We're going to take a look at what exactly it is. We're then going to implement it at the asset class level. I'll show you uh, basically how it's performed over the past 30 or 40 years. And then we're going to actually try to implement it using low cost index funds. So let's get right to it. And to start with, we have to make sure we, we know what his portfolio recommendations are. You're looking at an article from his website. This was not written uh, by Dave. It was written uh, by folks on, on his team. You can see it here. I'll leave a link to it uh, below uh, the video. And uh, again, it shows us the four categories of, of asset classes that he recommends. Now, the one thing we need to point out uh, to start with is he uses the word growth in three of the four asset classes. We have to keep in mind, though, that he's not using the term growth like uh, I think many in the in investing world use it as in the, in the sense of growth versus value. A growth company being a high flyer that grows its revenues very quickly, think a tech company, versus a value company is one that's been around for a long time, uh, probably pays a good dividend, it's, it's uh, stable, uh, and that would be you know a potential, uh, an example of a value fund. Here, He's not really using that term that way in most cases. So let's walk through each one of them. The growth and income fund, this as you can see, these are a large, well-known, big and boring American companies. These really are what an investing professional would describe as, or the industry would describe as a value company. So this would be large cap value. And we'll, again, we'll take a look at examples in a minute. This is where he uses the term growth, I think in its more typical sense, uh, he, these are companies that he says, you know, they, they, you might find them, they make the it gadget or luxury items, um, and they're experiencing large growth. So, it, and here he says it could be medium or large U.S. companies. So in, in my mind, I think a mid-cap growth fund potentially and a large-cap growth fund to represent this category. The third one, again, uses that term growth, aggressive growth, but what he's really referring to here. Uh, are small cap uh, companies, smaller companies. And you can see here, aggressive growth funds usually invest in smaller companies uh, with lots of uh, potential. So this would be a U.S. small cap asset class or, or, or fund. And then finally, he has just international, uh, an international fund, and that's easy enough to replicate. And what he does, what he recommends, is that you put 25% in each of these asset classes. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, you may be asking, Rob, where are all the bonds? Well, he doesn't believe in fixed income. He doesn't think, as I understand it in any event, he doesn't think you should own it. So this will be a 100% stock uh, uh, portfolio. And just to underscore this idea here between growth and value, remember growth and income I view as a value uh, kind of fund based on how he describes it and his, his growth as well a growth fund. And I wanna show you an example of that. Let's look at growth and income first. Remember, these are well-known, big, boring American companies. Well, um, here's the Vanguard Value Index Fund. We'll look at its portfolio. This is just an example. We can see it's squarely in the value column. If we come down and look at some of the investments in this fund, these are the top 10 holdings, what do you get? US companies, Boring, been around for a long time. Berkshire, United, Johnson & Johnson. We've got Procter & Gamble here. This is really what he's describing in this first growth and income fund. And then for growth companies that, you know, that might sell the IT gadget, for example, uh, we can look at Vanguard's value, uh, growth fund, which is ticker VUG. If we go to its portfolio, we can see it's clearly within the growth column of the Morningstar style box. And if we come down here to look at some of the companies, sure enough, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Google, and so on. So I think we've got the, the, the understanding of his four asset classes. I think we know them. This is clearly small cap. This is international. So how do we want to look at this? Let's first do it from an asset class perspective. And so that's what I've done here. And I'm using Portfolio Visualizer. And I'm using it at the asset class level. So we're not in, into any specific funds yet. We'll get there. So I've got U.S. large cap value. That's his growth and income fund. For his growth, he mentioned medium or large company. So I've just split it in two. 12.5% goes to large cap growth, 125 to mid cap growth. Then we have small cap. 
25%, and global excluding the US market, 25%. And um, if we analyze this, we can go back to January of 1986, and we can see over that time, this portfolio has done extremely well. It's, it's averaged just under 10% compound annual growth rate, uh, with I would call a fairly normal standard deviation, which measures the volatility uh, of the portfolio. If we started with 10,000 all the way back in 1986, uh, let's see, that would have been during the Reagan administration, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, we would have 317,000. Now, one way to compare this is to say, well, what if we just used a total U.S. stock market for 75%? So in other words, we didn't break it down between large cap growth and value and mid cap and small cap. We just put all of that in a U.S. stock market fund and then uh, put it over here for portfolio two. And then we also mimic the, the international exposure, 25% there. How would this maybe more more simple portfolio compare. And if we analyze the two, we can see they're very, very close, but sure enough, portfolio one, which is the Dave Ramsey portfolio, is actually outperformed by a bit, uh, a roughly 20 basis points. It's got slightly higher volatility, but it's outperformed. Now, the one thing we always wanna think about is why, and does the time period affect this? I think one of the big reasons is this overweight to small cap. He's got 25% in small cap. If we just use a sort of a total US stock market fund, and we can look at an example here, this is Vanguard's total stock market ETF. Uh, you can see we don't have anywhere near 25% in small cap. We've got about 9%. That's probably the single biggest difference between the Dave Ramsey portfolio and a portfolio that just tried to mimic the market. Now, the thing to keep in mind though, is that while uh, a heavy weighting to small cap, like Dave recommends, can outperform over periods of time, it can also underperform. So if instead of going back to 1986, let's just look at say, oh, the last decade or so from 2012, and we'll see, uh, they still were very close, but this time the simple two fund or two asset class portfolio outperformed again, not by much, uh, about uh, 60 basis points, slightly less volatile. But the point I want to stress is small cap and a heavier and heavier tilt towards small cap doesn't always outperform. For periods of time it has, and for other periods of time it hasn't. Now, how do we actually implement Dave's portfolio with specific index funds? Well, I've, I've done that for you here. Uh, and I will link to this uh, portfolio from Portfolio Visualizer uh, below the video. And what I've done is for uh, large cap value, I've just used the Vanguard Value Index Fund, very inexpensive index fund. Again, not the, you could pick any number of funds to do this, but that's the one I've chosen. Uh, for aggressive, uh, uh, for, for growth, is that what he calls it, growth? Yeah, for just growth, I've got the Vanguard Mid Cap Growth Fund, 12.5%, and the Vanguard uh, Growth ETF, which is a large cap, for 12.5%. And then we have the Vanguard um, Small Cap Index Fund. Again, not the only one you could pick, but that's what I picked here, 25%. And VXUS uh, for the international exposure. And again, when we analyze this portfolio, it doesn't go back to 1986 because we don't have the data for those funds, but it goes back to 2007. So that's uh, pretty good. And uh, 15 or so years. And we can see over those years, you know, the compound annual growth rate is not nearly what we were seeing over here um, and this goes back to 2012. Let me actually pull out the second portfolio here because it'll give us more data. Uh, it should, I guess it doesn't. All right, so here the data, the time series are a little different as you can see. And so this one's lower and we can look at the dates and maybe kind of understand why. This was sort of at the beginning of, of, of the Great Recession. Obviously some bad uh, stock market returns for a year or two. And so that's probably depressed uh, some of the returns, but overall still pretty good. And we can compare that. Again, we'll just go with VTI, 75%, and VXUS, 25. We analyze the two portfolios. Again, we're going back 15 years. Here are the, are the two portfolios. And again, they're pretty much neck and neck. Uh, the simple two fund portfolio uh, has outperformed eh, by a little bit. Again, we could pick a different time period. This now is you know, still 2007, uh, and you might get a different result. I mean, you can see the market correlation over here of these two funds is pretty much 
not, not quite, but almost one to one. So, you know, the, the, these really are, one could argue, not very distinguishable. They're very, very similar. And if we look at the Dave Ramsey portfolio, that kind of makes sense because, you know, we've got a large cap value, a mid cap growth, a large cap growth and small cap. And basically, when you add all of those up, it's more or less the total stock market. The big difference, and I've alluded to this once before, is the amount of the allocation to small cap. 25% is pretty significant. Over the last, as we can see here, 15 years, uh, that hasn't actually helped the Dave Ramsey portfolio as compared to just a total stock market approach. And that's probably largely because large cap has done extremely well uh, over the last decade or so. There could be, uh, certainly, and I would expect there will be times where an, an extra weighting to small cap, like what Dave recommends, will outperform a total uh, stock market approach. Again, over what periods of time and for how long and when does it change? Those are things we can't know. I will say this, if you were to follow something like the Dave Ramsey portfolio, you should expect the heavy allocation to small cap to either outperform or underperform a sort of total stock market approach for long periods of time, meaning years, right? Five, 10, 15 years. That would be my expectation. So there could be times when you know, you're thrilled that you're following this approach because of the, the, uh, the better returns. And there could be other times where uh, you're wondering what's wrong and wh why are the returns uh, lower than a total stock market uh, approach. So that's something you have to keep in mind because at the end of the day, what's gonna really matter is whether you can stick to your approach no matter what's going on in the stock market. market. Having said all of that, you know, I think honestly the Dave Ramsey approach generally is not a bad one. He tends to uh, uh, suggest a high cost advisors to, to implement the portfolio. That's not something I would personally do or agree with. I've implemented it for you with low cost index funds. The, the other concern though is it is 100% stock portfolio. And that while that might be reasonable for some folks, you have to be prepared for a wild ride. And certainly as you get near and enter into retirement, I don't personally believe a 100% stock portfolio is best for most people. It's certainly, I don't believe, uh, best uh, for me. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, you could implement the Dave Ramsey portfolio for the equity portion uh, of your overall portfolio if you wanted to, and then have you know some fixed income as well. That would be an option. Overall, I think his portfolio is reasonable. I think the allocation to small cap is, in, at least in my view, on the extreme edge of as much as you would want to go uh, to tilt your portfolio towards small cap. I'm personally not comfortable tilting small cap beyond 10%, but of course uh, you may have a different view of that. So there you go. That's the Dave Ramsey portfolio. We've looked at it from an asset class persp perspective. I've also looked at it from some specific index funds. I will link uh, to, to what I showed you during the video. Uh, below the video, you can check it out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.